Your Excellency Dennis Francis, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for convening this 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly to consider the tragic situation in the occupied Palestinian territories, especially after repeated efforts to adopt a Security Council resolution have faltered for reasons known to all. Mr. President, it is very easy to deliver a standard statement in which we warn of the grave repercussions of the current crisis, in which we condemn the unjust Israeli aggression on, Gash, on Gaza, in which we address the brutality of this aggression and its violation of international law and human values, in which we call once again for protecting the Palestinian people and ensuring the delivery of humanitarian aid. Mr. President, it is difficult, though, to have to repeat all of the above in all the fora that discussed the crisis, starting with the Cairo Peace Summit, at which the President of the Republic hosted a number of world leaders in an attempt to overcome this crisis, followed by the open debate at the Security Council on the Middle East two days ago, and then bilateral meetings with all influential international actors that communicated with Egypt. We repeat these points, although we are convinced, Mr. President, that the truth is clear and wouldn't need any repetition or explanation of or elaboration if we all applied one standard rather than double standards. It is one standard known to us all, Mr. President, no to targeting civilians, no to terrorism, no to violating international humanitarian law, no to bombarding hospitals and medical centers, no to killing children, no to the siege, and no to cutting off all basic necessities of life, no to forcible displacement and liquidating the rights of people, no to genocide. All people are equal. We made the difficult choice, Mr. President, of dedicating ourselves to getting a clear position out of the General Assembly regarding what is transpiring in the Palestinian territories, the crimes, the violations, so that we would not be, as the Arab proverb goes, a mute devil that does not speak out for the truth at a time where so many are turning a blind eye to the truth. Silence is no longer an option. Enough is enough. We can no longer bear what is happening to the Palestinians. The required stance is clear and simple. It is no more than reaffirming the most basic human values, the most basic principles of international law, the most basic political and diplomatic norms in armed conflict. In this context, we would like to stress the following points. First, it is obvious that when the situation explodes, the UN would work on ensuring a ceasefire, not because it is biased towards one party over the other, not because it supports terrorism, but because it is important to stop the bloodshed, to prevent any further escalation, to show that the United Nations is able to fulfill its role in preserving the most basic right in the Human Rights Declaration, the right to life. The right that was forgotten by those who pay lip service to human rights. We have heard justifications by those who want this war to continue that make them complicit in the violations unfolding before us. A ceasefire. Is this really so hard? Second, the policies of besieging, starvation, denial of basic necessities, food and medication, including water. Water, ladies and gentlemen, these policies have no place in the 21st century. They are reminiscent of practices of the Middle Ages. The General Assembly must send a clear, unequivocal message. These necessities must be delivered to Gaza without any conditions. Denial of humanitarian aid under these circumstances is a death sentence for the people of Gaza. Humanitarian aid delivered within a robust orderly mechanism under the supervision of the United Nations. Is this really so hard? Third, any attempt 
to forcibly displace the Palestinian people within its territories or to neighboring countries for the third time in its history, citing protection as a reason or any other reason. Any such attempts must be confronted resolutely and rejected categorically. We must refer here to statements made by some politicians in this very hall at a similar emergency special session, lamenting rights that might be lost, while now we see them show understanding for or even acquiescence of forcibly displacing Palestinians to neighboring countries. Why not? They have used, they, ha they are used to ignoring this people, ignoring its cause for centuries, ignoring its rights and the rights of the people of the region until we reach the absolute bot bottom. No to the forcible displacement. Is this really so hard? Force. The Palestinian leadership has insisted time and again on providing protection, international protection to its people that is languishing under the yoke of occupation, especially in light of repeated violations by armed settler militias. But these calls have fell on deaf ears. We cannot help but call once again before you all for providing this protection in the hope that this would awaken the conscience of those that are lamenting the loss of human rights of all people, all people except for the Palestinian peoples. To those rights, they turn their backs. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the proponents of killing women and children, proponents of the siege, the forcible displacement, and other proponents of the war, they claim that this war aims to counter terrorism and uprooting terrorism, but the reality is that failing to take effective and immediate measures to stop this war would inevitably fuel terrorism. It would push generations of young people towards extremist ideologies. The reality is also that not stopping this war now before it's too late would push the whole region towards a devastating regional war that will affect the interests of those who are stalling in calling for its end more than the interests of other countries. The reality is also that failure to come out of this crisis with a clear vision to revive the peace process, revive a serious peace process that address the roots of the current crisis and that would lead to the two-state solution would be a grave mistake with long-term repercussions. Future generations will hold us accountable for our inaction and our myopia. Ladies and gentlemen, Egypt as a leading country, the leading country in consolidating peace in the Middle East will continue its tireless effort, efforts to ensure a ceasefire, to protect civilians, to ensure the delivery of humanitarian aid. It will continue to mediate, to release hostages and the captives and prisoners. It will continue to work on creating a conducive environment to revive the peace process that is the only way to achieve peace and stability in the Middle East. Considering all of the above, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon you to support the draft, con draft resolution under consideration today and to vote in favor for this resolution to achieve justice, to apply one standard aiming only at stopping the killing, at maintaining peace and security, at protecting civilians. We hope that this position would be a nucleus to achieving peace in the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, Stop this absurdity. Stop this war immediately. Stand on the side of truth and justice. Vote in favor of this resolution. Save the peace. Is this really so hard? I thank you, Mr. President. This has been the Nod News Network. Transmission complete.